begin 3.1 pairs of lines and angles today we're going to do pairs of lines tomorrow we're going to do pairs of angles okay so go ahead and flip to the front of your notes eric foyker <coughs> to the front of your notes so we can begin talking um we're going to learn to identify lines and planes which you already know how to do um identify parallel and perpendicular lines and then tomorrow identify pairs of angles formed by a transversal all right, you don't need to know that for right now. Parallel lines, we'll start there. Parallel lines are coplanar lines that do not intersect. So you want to write that down where it says parallel lines. They're coplanar lines that do not intersect. What does coplanar mean? On the same plane. So these are lines on the same plane that don't intersect. What you will also want to write down If you'll notice on your paper, you have lines that are identical to the lines that are on the screen. But on your paper, you don't have the letters L and M. I would write those down because we're going to state that they are parallel in just a few seconds. So L, M, lettuce and mayo. Lieutenant Marshall. Um, what starts with an L? Lemon meringue. Lemon meringue. It's my husband's favorite pie. Good. All right, so we're going to... Name that they're parallel. But first of all, in geometry, we never just look at something and say, huh, they look, they look parallel. Is that good enough reasoning? No, they have to have proof. And in order to prove it, what you will see, you'll see either arrows to indicate that they're parallel, or you'll see triangles. Okay? So I would write that down. You'll see arrows. Most of all, you'll see actually triangles arrows and triangles to indicate that lines are parallel. If you don't see triangles or arrows, then they're not parallel, even if they look it. So you want to write on your pictures because you don't have triangles or the lines, or the arrows I mean. I would draw them. And then we're going to state that they're parallel. Okay? So the same property applies here. If you had a third line and it only had one arrow, is this line going to be parallel to the other two? No, because they don't have the same amount. Okay? So that still applies here. Um, what we will do to name that they are parallel <clears throat> is first we have to name the lines. How do we name this top line right here? <coughs> line L. That's it. So we're going to say line L. I skipped this part, but you can write it down. You're going to write the parallel symbol. The parallel symbol looks like this. So I didn't tell you that earlier. I'm sorry. It pops up next. I skipped. So where it says parallel line symbol, you'll want to write that down. The symbol looks like I call them the twin towers because they're vertical. They should be the same size, give or take. All right, this means is parallel to, oops, cancel. All right, and then what's the name of the second line? Line M. Line M. So you want to write that the symbol are the two lines. All right, so let's name the second pair. Um, but these are different. Why are these lines going to be named differently than the lines we just did? Because they have points. Okay, so how do we name a line with two points? A, B, and what else? Nope. We still haven't finished naming A, B. What kind of line is this? A line, a line segment, or a ray? It's a line. Remember, segments have a... Nope, it's a, it's a line. Segments have a start and an end. Rays have a starting point and go infinitely in the other direction. Lines have arrows at the end. Okay, so because it's a line, its name will look like this. Okay, A, B, lines above it. That's from 1.1. All right, and then well, again, what is our parallel symbol? The two twin towers. It's a little sad, I'm sorry. And then what is our second line? CD. 
with the arrows above. All right, so that's how we would list them parallel to each other. See, the next thing that pop up was going to be the notation. That's my bad. All right, so what we are going to do is I'm actually going to pop up a picture of the west side of Jacksonville. This little dot right here is where you and I are because that's where I pulled it up on my computer. All right, so we're going to find parallel lines. I know it's hard for you to see, but it's not hard for me to see. Um, can you think of a line that is parallel to I-10? Ramona, yeah. That's good. Do we see any others? Gordine. Gordine, that's fine. Stewart. Where's Stewart? Oh, up there? Yeah, that's good. Literally all of these lines up here are parallel. Which one? Yeah, these are parallel to each other. Boom, boom, and even this is Palisades, boom. What about Cahoon? It's also parallel to, and to all of these. Uh, Frost, you're talking about here? Yeah. Yeah. They're parallel right there. Do we see any others? There are a ton of them. Andrew? Ingram, yeah. Ingram and all of our other horizontal lines are parallel. You said what? Who said that? Austin? 295? 295, and we could say Memorial Parkway right here. You could even say whatever street this is. Okay, parallel. Ooh. All right, so all of the ones we've labeled that are vertical, they're parallel. All of the ones that are horizontal, they're also going to be parallel to each other. Okay, so there are a lot of parallel streets. Who makes streets? Street makers. People, okay, our city government. Um, some of, most of them are straight. Why do we think some of them are not? Why are so many of them curved, go around? Houses. Which are built first, houses or streets? Streets. Streets are built first, okay? But what do streets build around? Hills and divots. Yeah. Hills, um, a bunch of trees, or you see how there's a, whatever this is, like a creek, whatever you want to call it, small. If you look at Lennox, it kind of divots that way and it goes back. What my guess would be on things like this is they found a skinnier part of the water, whatever kind of water it is, and then like built over that. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> what you'll see in a lot of cities is a lot of parallel streets and a lot of horizontal streets. But when you get more towards like neighborhoods, which is what all of these are, they're all crazy and wonky and oh, whatnot. All right, so these were some pairs of parallel lines. We're gonna talk about perpendicular, which we've talked about a lot lately. Perpendicular lines are lines that form right angles. So you wanna write that down. You already have the picture. So these are lines that form right angles. Bless you. What is the symbol for perpendicular? The upside down T. Okay, so you want to write that in. Okay, it looks like this. And then it says key fact, four right angles are formed. So it's understood, and here is why. How many degrees is a straight angle? 180. If there's already 90 taken up, how many degrees is left for the other portion of the angle? 90. Here's also what happens. What relationship does this angle I've just highlighted and the angle across from it, what relationship do they have? They're vertical. Collapse for you, Jonathan. Good job. First class, get that. Vertical angles. Vertical angles only share what? A vertex. Okay. So what else do we know about vertical angles? They're congruent. If you don't remember that, you will in this chapter because we use it again. So vertical angles are opposite of each other. They share a vertex. These two are vertical. These two are vertical. How many degrees is it all, all the way around in a circle? 360. 360. What's 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90? 360. So there's where that four angles are formed, all right? 
we're going to go back to our map and figure out where we can find some perpendicular lines. Okay, let's look at Calhoun. There are a couple. All right, what street forms a right angle with Calhoun? Yeah, Gordine. Ramona. Uh, Lennox, not so much. Because it's too angled down. Do you see what I'm saying? Do we see any others? One above Ramona. <laughs> yeah, the one above Ramona. Whatever that little street is. I-10. I-10. I-10 and the line, or uh, what is that, Calhoun? Calhoun? Stewart. Yeah. All of these intersections up here, Stewart Avenue, that's a uh, perpendicular lines. That's perpendicular. Those are perpendicular. All of those up there are all perpendicular. Another one above what? Cassie Road. Yeah, above, like, here? Yeah, I agree. I agree. That little intersection. We got a lot over here near Stillwell. Here's a straight line. There's a road coming straight out of it, and also the road next to it. All right, um, all of these off of Memorial Park would be perpendicular. Ingram and whatever street this is would be perfect. Yes, sir. Trinity Christian Road. And what? This one? And what? And the first one I drew? This one's already vertical. We need a horizontal. Oh, Are you talking about this little thingy? Perpendicular, yes. This one would be. That's good. This one kind of is. But if you know on uh, our campus, I feel like this one, I, I mean, it could be. That little corner could be perpendicular. All right. What, we've missed the largest oh. perpendicular one. Jonah? Uh, Lennox and uh, Ramona. Lennox and Ramona. Where's that? Where's Ramona? Here's Lennox. And Ramona. Lennox and Ramona? Oh, no. Sorry. I was reading wrong. You're good. What's that? What's this one? That one going in the middle that's covered? This one? Yes. It's Cahoon. Okay. This one would be too curved to be perpendicular. But I did hear Eric say it. What'd you say? I-10. I-10, 295. You'll find that nine times out of ten, if not more. Um, here's why. What direction does I-10 go? North. North. East, east. east west. west. Yeah. I-10 yeah. actually starts in Jacksonville and ends in California. I don't know if y'all know that. In California. In California. Yeah. The ending is literally in Jacksonville. Isn't that cool? And then it goes all the way across the United States and ends in California. Don't ask me what part of California. <coughs> I don't remember. Anyway, so where do we say it goes? Which directions? East and west. East and west. Where does 95 go? <laughs> North and south. So whenever you find east and west, so that would be this, east and west, north and south, they'll always make a perfect perpendicular uh, set of lines. Okay? So those are perpendicular lines. We got one more type of line to learn. It's skew. Skew lines. Literally, something to remember is they have nothing in common. Just absolutely nothing in common. These are two random lines. They'll never intersect. They're not on the same plane. So the official definition, and you'll only write down some of it, they do not intersect and they're not on the same plane. These are lines that do not intersect and they are not on the same plane. They literally have nothing in common. They do not intersect and they're not on the same plane. <coughs> I know it's hard to see, but we got this picture going on right here. All right, here's a bright green line. It represents the road. And then this bright green line up here, what represents the top of the wall. They will never intersect. If this continued infinitely and this continued infinitely in both directions, they would never touch. They're not on the same plane. Um, so those are skew. We're going to find a couple on the picture you have. You have a little box. There are a lot of them. First, pick a line. Sure, A, B. We'll start A, B. A line has two legs. 
All right, AB, let's talk about this in terms of the box, okay? When you have a box, look at my imaginary box, okay? Okay, you have the sides of the box, you got a top and a bottom of the box, you got a front and a back of the box. Do we agree? Yeah. So when I say what part of the box are we talking about, you just tell me what part of the box, okay? I love Dawson's face. Okay, so what part of the box is AB a part of? The top and then the back. Okay, so whenever we're talking about skew lines, because we are trying to find a line skew with AB, that's still not a different enough color. Let's try, let's try purple. Okay, here. We're trying to find a line skew with AB. It cannot be any of the highlighted red because they're coplanar and they intersect. Okay, so none of these red, you can name literally any other line. Okay, we could say DH. Okay, DH does not intersect with AB. Okay, it's not one of the sides of its plane, so it's not coplanar. We could name HG. We could name HE. We could name GF. We could name GC. All right? So any of those would be skew. Let's pick another. Pick a random line. CG. Sure, let's do CG. CG is a part of what part of the box? Front. 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 And then this side over here. Okay, so I outline it so I can see which ones can't be used. None of the ones outlined in red can be skewed to the green line. So pick a line that is going to be skew. A, D, what else did we say? E, H, I agree. What else we got? E, F. I don't think we said A, B, did we? And then we got E, A back there. All of those would be skew, okay? Skew literally have nothing in common, okay? They'll never intersect. They are not coplanar, okay? Questions on skew. Okay, we move on. Parallel planes. This is the last thing we do. It's on the next page. Then we do a couple review problems, and then ta-da. That's it for today. Parallel planes. All planes are either parallel or intersecting. You're going to write down this part. Parallel planes are two planes that do not intersect. Parallel planes are two planes that do not intersect. Parallel planes are two planes that do not intersect. So it's already highlighted somewhat on the box. We got the top and the bottom are parallel. What about the left side? What is it parallel with? The right side. What about the front of the box? The back of the box. Okay? So parallel planes um, are going to not intersect. That's literally it. Okay? The reason this picture is here is because in order for these stairs, you to be able to walk up the stairs, they have to be parallel to each other. Um, just a little bit higher up. We're going to do our first example. Think of each segment in the figure as part of a line. Which lines or planes appear to fit the description? Letter A, lines parallel to CD containing point A. Okay, so I'm going to highlight CD and point A. I need a line that is parallel. What do parallel lines have to be? Nope. They can intersect, but they have to be coplanar. They're coplanar, and they do not intersect. Don't intersect. All right, so what line, including the letter A, would be parallel to CD? A, B. Oops, sorry. A, B, and this is actually a line segment because it's a segment of the box. Okay, so as a starting point at A, ends at B. We could have all said B, A, same thing. All right, what other line is actually parallel to CD? FE. FE is, but does it contain the point A? No, so we're not going to name it here. It is parallel, but we don't need to name it. Okay? All right, this second question, letter B. Lines that skew. What do we know about skew lines? They're not, nothing, really nothing. They're not coplanar. What else are they not? They don't intersect. So they're not coplanar, they don't intersect. So we have DC, uh, CD again, 
And we need to have a line containing point A. AH, I agree. AH would be good. It's not on the same plane. It does not intersect with CD. What other could we have said? AG. AG. I also agree. All right, then we got perpendicular. Perpendicular, do they intersect? Yeah, yeah. yeah they intersect, and then what do they do? They form, right they form a right angle. So they form 90. All right, so again, we're using line CD and containing point A. So here's what you need to look at. You need to intersect. The only way to intersect A and CD is by this blue line I've highlighted because any others, AB does not intersect, AG does not intersect, AH does not intersect, but AD does. So our final answer would be AD. All right, and then the last, we have planes parallel to plane EFG containing point A. So let's look at EFG. What part of the box is EFG? The bottom. What's parallel to the bottom of the box? The top of the box. So first off, when we name a plane, what comes first? Plane. Make sure you have the lines above when you name them. We need the word plane, and then how many letters do we name? Three. Three of them. So we could do A, B, C, uh, A, D, C, C, D, A, D, C, B, anything like that. Question about this section. Sweet. We got one more, then we're finished. Name a pair of lines, uh, sorry, a pair of parallel lines. When we're finding parallel lines, what do we look for? We look for triangles. Triangles are what? Arrows. All right, do we see any triangles or arrows in our picture? Yes. 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 I see them here and here. So we need to name them parallel to each other. So let's start by naming, we'll name this line first. Okay, what kind of line is the one I've highlighted in blue? It's a ray. So when we name a ray, good job, Austin, back there. Um, when we name a ray, what comes first? The end point. What's the end point of our ray here? The letter D. And then it goes off in the direction of either letter. So you could say DM. You could say DA. Those are your two options. All right, and then what symbol means parallel? Two. The two, the two uh, twin tower lines. All right, and then we have a second line we're naming. Okay, it's in bright blue. Some of you can't see it. I'm sorry. Uh, we're naming this line. All right, again, it's a ray. What is the end point of this ray? E, and it goes towards F. So we would say DM is parallel to ray EF. Questions on this one? Okay. We've got the last. When we're looking for perpendicular lines, what should we look for in the picture? Right we look for the right angle, yeah. Would you look like a box? So we want to look for a right angle. Do we see one? Yes. I think we do. We see one right here. So we need to name the two lines that are intersecting to form this right angle. So we could say, well, let's, we could do this one first. What kind of line is this, not horizontal, but more horizontal line? What kind of line are we talking about? It's a ray still. All right, and then its end point is still D. And again, you could say DM. You could also say DA. This time we're naming perpendicular lines. So what does that symbol look like? Okay. Upside down T. All right, and then we need to name this other line that's intersecting. But is it a line, a line segment, or a ray? This one. Line. Line. We got two arrows at the end, so it's a line. All right, so when you name the line, you got the arrows. All right, and then you name any two letters on the line. So you could say BM, um, MB, BF, FB, FM, MF, any of those. Okay? Now right, we have our last is FE. What does this symbol mean again? Parallel. Parallel. Is FE, so let's look at this. FE is right here. Sorry, right here. 
is Fe parallel to, what is it, AC? AC. There's a lot of things wrong with this. Is it? No. No, no there's a couple of reasons. So, no. It says explain. So, there's two reasons. It's not going to be skew. They're on the same plane. It's on the same map. They will eventually intersect. They'll, yeah, it's number one. They'll eventually intersect. Mm -hmm. That's another reason, but not quite the one they're looking for. Entu eventually intersect. But that is correct. It is a ray. But what is another reason we know that they're not parallel? What do we look for when we look for parallel? We look for the triangles. We don't see any triangles. So we got no triangles and no arrows. No triangles, no arrows.